This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Uh, I want to ask you something, but I, I just don't know how to word it. I'll, I'll just go for it. Do you need a website? Because if you do, then you need to use Squarespace. I wanted to build my website, Arlo recommends, but I had no idea how to build a website. But Squarespace made it so easy. No coding knowledge or anything like that required. I literally just picked a template, messed around with it a little bit, and suddenly I had a website. Making content is just as easy. I can format things however I want. I can include videos and pictures and, and social media posts, throw some links in there, have it all set to automatically publish and push to social media at a later date, boom, I'm done. Hands off, it's done. If I ever want more, Squarespace offers loads of powerful extensions and I really appreciate the beautiful suite of analytics. I can always see what kinds of people are coming to my website, what the popular posts are, all that stuff. To try out Squarespace for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. And now for today's recommendation. Plume Valley by Windows 96. I love synth music. I love classic JRPG music. And this album is that exact style. It's moody, it's nostalgic, it's beautiful, and I have been listening to it a lot. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now, I, I don't really know how to do this, but uh, I'll just go for it. I'll just, I'll just go onto the video now. Particle. Hello, my friends. So if you clicked on this video, you probably read the title. Today we're talking about Nintendo series that I'm most excited to see next gen on whatever the next system ends up being. But I must clarify that we're not talking about the games I'm most excited to play or even the games that I simply want to exist. Instead, we're taking the title of the video literally. These are the games I am most excited to see. <laughs> Meaning we are specifically talking about graphics. Being a Nintendo fan and a graphics enjoyer can be tough sometimes. Say the word graphics too loud and someone is likely to start screaming at you that gameplay is more important and you gotta cover your head and run for safety. And you know they're right, but like, it's also okay to enjoy things that look nice, you know? And most Nintendo games do, most Nintendo games do look really nice, but it's frustrating knowing they could look so much nicer. There was once a time when Nintendo was on par with the competition. Metroid Prime was genuinely the best looking sixth gen game, but then the Wii stalled their graphics by a whole generation and it was the right move. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, it was frustrating in its own way. We would have to wait a whole extra generation for fancy HD Nintendo games. And then when they launched the Switch, they did it again. And once more, this was the objectively correct move, but ooh, that meant another delay. Right now, we are seeing the incredible stuff that eighth and ninth gen systems can do, and I am drooling at the idea of Nintendo games looking like that. So now that we're finally on the cusp of better looking Nintendo games, presumably on par with Gen 8, I can't help but dream about what we might see next gen. So let's talk about the series I am watching the closest, the eye candy I am most looking forward to tasting with my eyes. Ugh. Now, one funny thing that's worth mentioning, there are some series that you would think I would be excited to see, but their latest games already look so good that somehow I'm like not that eager. It's weird. Like Mario Kart is a good example. I don't know about you, but I think 8 already looks so good. The original tracks in particular, they just, they look amazing. There's so much detail. Everything has this wonderful, just, I don't know, this smoothness to it. And everything moves by so fast that it's hard to believe more detail would do a lot of good, you know? Maybe more particle effects, you know, slightly more detailed animations, that kind of stuff. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm sure 9 is gonna look great, but I guess I already feel kind of satisfied. And another one like that is Splatoon. Three looks incredible. It's slick, it's colorful. The ink already feels like it's running on space age tech. A new one will look better, but it's hard to imagine myself being that much more satisfied, you know? Even more detailed ink splats might be nice, I guess. Point is, I guess I was just kind of surprised by how this list turned out. So let's actually get to it. And the first one might surprise you as well. I am not a Xenoblade fan. 
It is the number one game that people pester me to play. But I'm just really not interested in the gameplay and everything I've seen of the characters and the story. I'm sorry. I am, however, interested in seeing how the next game is gonna look. Even back on the Wii, Monolith Soft showed that they can pack impossibly huge worlds onto basically any hardware. And both on the Wii U and Switch, they have delivered some really gorgeous epic fantasy adventures. These fantastical landscapes filled with weird alien creatures and then the backgrounds, the vistas. I, it just looks so good. This is clearly a bunch of extremely talented developers, and it's no wonder that Nintendo has given them so much trust and leaned on them for help so many times. I have no doubt that whatever they cook up for the next Nintendo system, it is going to be humongous and gorgeous. Or rather, they will be humongous and gorgeous. You know, all eight games. <laughs> okay, so Pokemon might be another surprising one. Graphics are obviously a big point of contention in the realm of Pokemon discourse, and most people feel that the Pokemon company has really been dropping the ball in this department. Despite the massive revenue they pull in, Pokemon games seem to have smaller budgets and shorter development times than you might expect. And this really comes through in the final product. These games just don't look that great a lot of the time. The latest games sometimes struggling to run at all. Well, I'm putting Pokemon on this list for a different reason than the others. It's not so much that I'm excited to see how amazing Pokemon looks on next-gen hardware, it's more that I'm just eager to play a Pokemon game that hypothetically looks at least kind of nice. I enjoyed Scarlet and Violet. The graphics kind of, sort of, got the job done. They conveyed the epic landscape in a way that was not a complete failure, but it really was the gameplay that shone brightest. Even if the Pokemon company still struggles to develop AAA Pokemon experiences, at the very least, they might be able to utilize some extra hardware power. Even if the next big Pokemon just like basically looked like a Switch game, except with good textures and draw distance and resolution and stuff, you know, I'd be fine with that. Back to something more exciting though. A couple years ago, I would not have considered putting Kirby on this list. His games always look great, but more so from a cute design perspective than from a graphical one. But Kirby in the Forgotten Land changed that. It changed uh, the heck out of that. The setting was epic, the landscape was beautiful. It had such an incredible atmosphere. Every piece of every level was packed with so much detail. It's like I said in my review, the game wasn't just artful. It was a piece of art, you know what I'm saying? And it just, it really felt like such a grand adventure. I mean, don't get me wrong, the game play and all that totally helped, but really, it is those visuals that really sealed the deal for me. And assuming the next Kirby game will also be a grand 3D adventure, that is one game I absolutely cannot wait to see next gen. Forgotten Land already looks so incredible, and the idea of a similar setting powered by Gen 8 hardware has me drooling. Now, you might expect me to put 3D Mario on this list, but I think that's another one where I've already been so satisfied. Odyssey looks so darn good. I mean, you know, there's little technical details that could be better, you know, the resolution and the lighting and that stuff. There's room for improvement, but Nintendo has nearly perfected the look of Mario games. You see it in the sports games and, and Captain Toad and stuff like that too. The characters are just so smooth and fluid. Newer 3D Mario will undoubtedly look amazing, and I'm definitely excited to see it. But honestly, I think I'm more excited to see a new Paper Mario. Another unexpected one, probably. Obviously, I have pretty big problems with the modern Paper Mario games, and I have absolutely zero hope that the next one, if there is a next one, will just be a good game with no caveats, no weird mechanics bringing it down. Point is, however future Paper Mario games turn out, I just can't wait to see how they look. These games are weirdly cutting edge. No pun intended, I guess. They recreate the look and feel of paper and other craft materials so flawlessly. And those materials make up some supremely beautiful environments, especially in Origami King. And complementing the incredible visuals are the animations, the way characters and objects and enemies fold and bend and move. Sometimes it's jaw-dropping. And since these games try to achieve realism, I think it's safe to assume that more hardware power means even more realism. 
A new next-gen Mario game might even start to look like an actual little paper world, and I don't know, that's exciting. Oh, oh, here's a big one, here's a big one. It is Metroid, but it's not 2D Metroid. Metroid Dread, it looks too good, I'm sorry. Obviously, room for improvement overall, but golly gosh, not much room. I mean, these cutscenes already look like they're from Gen 8. What did they do? I don't, I still don't understand this. I'm definitely excited for something new in the 2D front, but not nearly as excited as I am for Metroid Prime 4. Probably kinda obviously. Yes, it's the only game on this list that we know for certain exists. We don't know for sure if it's coming to the next system or just the Switch which, or maybe both, but I'm still gonna go out on a limb and guess that it is just coming to next gen. And hey, even if not, even if we gotta wait for Metroid Prime 5 or whatever, any kind of Metroid Prime game is going to look eye-wateringly beautiful on next gen hardware. I mean, my goodness, it is, it is hard to even <laughs> imagine. The original Metroid Prime looked so incredibly weirdly good on GameCube. It was the best looking game of that entire console generation, full stop. And then the Switch remaster also looked so incredibly weirdly good all over again. I've said before how if Metroid Prime 4 came to Switch and it looked exactly as good as Prime Remastered, I would be happy. And that was just a remaster, but an actual next gen Metroid Prime built from the ground up I, I can't, man. I just, I don't, I just don't even know. Now this next one is much more theoretical because Nintendo's relationship with DK is strange. He's as old as Mario, he's part of their legacy, and yet his mainline games are weirdly infrequent. We have no idea when we're gonna get a new DK game. There was a pretty strong rumor a year or two ago that we were getting one, but nothing has come up yet. If it's a 2D game, that's still pretty exciting, but the Returns games are already so colorful and animated so well that I don't think a next-gen version would feel like a huge leap. I mean, just look at similarly colorful games on Gen 8 and Gen 9 hardware. They look great, but I don't think it's that much better, you know? Mostly the resolution and stuff. 3D? DK, on the other hand? Now that is exciting. I'm not holding my breath for one, naturally, but if they do one, it is hard to imagine that they wouldn't make it look darn good. Lush, jungly 3D environments, realistic leaves and foliage, big bosses, more Kong fur. So many of Nintendo's other legacy series have grand, beautiful 3D adventures. And now that Kirby has had his, it is DK's turn. Heck, I would settle for a DK64 remake as long as they put a lot of effort into the visuals. I just want to see DK in 3D. Whenever it happens, I just know it is going to look beautiful. We got a few more big ones to finish up the list. Luigi's Mansion should probably be in the already good enough category. I do not know why Luigi's Mansion 3 looks as good as it does. I mean, I, I guess it's the relatively small scale of each room or something. You know, it's a little easier to pump a little bit more power into the graphics, I guess. But there are times when that game looks like a stinking Pixar movie. Character models and animations are impossibly smooth. Lighting is bafflingly realistic. And the overall aesthetic, obviously, is simply phenomenal. But despite this series already reaching such a ridiculously high graphical bar, I guess that just makes me all the more excited to see how much further, how much more just ridiculously high they can push that bar. They've already done the impossible. Now I'm morbidly curious to see what else they can do. Next Level Games is just so absurdly talented. They seem to have no problems transitioning to HD hardware, that's for sure. So I have no doubt that even stronger hardware would allow them to accomplish more ridiculous graphical feats. Even more realistic lighting and texture work would really make a big difference, I think. Particle effects as well, that's big. Both the flashlight and the vacuum work very well with particle effects. My finger are very, oh, just painfully crossed that we get a new Luigi's Mansion next gen. Three sold amazingly, so we better. Then, oh, Pikmin. 
I mean, of course I'm gonna mention Pikmin, right? We don't technically know if we're actually going to get another Pikmin game next gen. Might take another 10 years, I hate to say. But four seems to be selling pretty well, so there's at least a chance we won't have to wait 10 more years, maybe, I don't know. If we do get Pikmin 5 next gen though, there's another game that I am looking forward to looking at. Pikmin is another series that really benefits from hardware power because it's always strived for realism in the environment. You know, the characters and the creatures and whatnot, they're pretty cartoony, but like the world itself, you know, they try really hard to accurately capture the beauty of nature. Pikmin 4 looks incredible. Probably even better than I expected. The environments are more vibrant and detailed than ever. But wow, can you imagine this with some extra hardware power? Can you imagine what the same artists and programmers are capable of? The more real the world looks, the more surreal and magical it is to watch Pikmin live in it. Better graphics also means more detailed animations and thus more Pikmin personality, which already shines through so brightly in 4. Pikmin get more adorable with every game. I, I'm not even sure if I can handle next-gen Pikmin animation. And lastly, we come to the final series that I am most excited to see next gen. And yes, I have saved the most important for last. There is one Nintendo series that strives to be grander than any other. The biggest scopes, the highest budgets, and of course, the best graphics. I speak of Zelda. Zelda is the AAA Nintendo series. No other adventures end up feeling quite as special in my eyes. Over the years, Zelda games have frequently been the brightest spots in their respective libraries. Many of my most special gaming experiences have been playing Zelda games. And whenever Nintendo has ever teased a new system, my first thought has always been, I wonder how amazing the new Zelda will look. Because when it comes to a Nintendo system's graphical capabilities, nothing ever shows them off like Zelda. Real talk, I think Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom look really beautiful. Art direction and all that are stellar. Atmosphere, just the overall vibe, oh, absolutely incredible. Yet on a technical, graphical level, you can see how much they're being held back. Clearly a whole lot was sacrificed to achieve the whole massive seamless open world thing. The games run impressively well considering they achieve so much, especially with Tears of the Kingdom and all of its different mechanics. But from a purely visual standpoint, there is so, so much room for improvement. I know I am probably in the minority here, but honestly, I still feel like in ways that original Wii U tech demo looked better. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I know it's not quite fair to compare because that was a pre-animated fight in a small controlled environment. And of course that's gonna look amazing versus a full complete game that has to, you know, run <laughs> this huge open world and all that. And the actual games on Switch do have a more cohesive and artistic visual style than this demo, sure. But man, I just, I think in a lot of ways, this is just more fun to look at. It looks better. I'm just I want a Zelda with real fancy graphics like this. And you know what? I think it's perfectly possible. Gen 8 gave us some games with phenomenal graphics and humongous open worlds. If you got enough horsepower, you can definitely have both. If Nintendo throws everything they've got at the next Zelda game like they usually do, we could be looking at something truly beautiful. Something mind-blowing. A new standard for Nintendo. And that's why, out of all the games we will likely see on Nintendo's next system, Zelda is without a doubt the most exciting to me. So there you have it. And I know I'm just doing the classic YouTuber engagement farming thing when I ask you to go leave comments, but I think this is a particularly interesting topic. I genuinely want to know the specific games and the graphics that you are most looking forward to seeing next gen. And in the meantime, there is no in the meantime. I just don't have another way to end the video. See you later.